Welcome to the Flames and Obstacles feature video. In this video, we will discuss Thinking Particles 6.2, the latest subscription drop for Thinking Particles users. In this subscription drop, we will introduce a brand new fluid solver. This fluid solver is the first Voton-based compressible fluid solver for 3D Studio Max. It allows us to create amazing effects in real time, uses a low memory footprint and is purely particle based. It also ships with its own atmospheric effect that runs with multiple renderers. Before we show you how this works, let's have a look at the scene right now. The particles are created with our position born and the position is fed by two random math operators. So we feed in a X value and a Y value to specify the position for the particles that will be created for this effect. We use random generators for the position to create an area rather than a point where we emit the particles. Let's have a look at the new goodies in Thinking Particles Drop 2. Here you can see all the nodes that are connected with our new smoke solver. We have the smoke group node that controls the parameters for the smoke solver. We have the smoke render that actually controls the rendering. Then we have the temperature ranges, the boundary and the smoke solver itself. It's pretty the same setup like any other fluid in thinking particles. Let me show you now what we can do with these new tools. We're going to just play back this animation and then you will see what our smoke solver can do. And the first thing you see, it's really blazing fast. You see the worlds and the interaction in real time and no pre-simulation is needed. What you see here is a live playback right from the viewport in 3D Studio Max. All these parameters are based on real world values like density, pressure, heat, and the whole Wharton based fluid solver is based on physics parameters. Let's have a look how we created this scene. And the interesting part is in the position born, we have speed set to zero. So there's no actual speed on the particles. So why do they rise here in this animation? The force that does this is the temperature. The temperature of our flame controls how fast the flame rises. And when the flame cools down, the rising slows down. All these settings and all these connections to real world parameters, you are free to adjust in real time with these operators. Now let me adjust one more parameter, that's the vorticity and we can create now, I have raised it to 1.0 and you can see it's now a much more violent response to the uh, worlds and uh, interaction with the air. Let's put it back to 2.2 so that we get a much more quieter flame. So for the next thing we are going to do is let's see how it behaves with obstacles. Let me bring in an obstacle into the flow of our flame. So the rising smoke should go through this torus object. And as you can see, it actually works pretty well. It interacts with the rotating uh, torus. And keep in mind, this is not just a particle a bounce collision thing. It has parameters that even take the volume into account and an area around the object. So you can simulate the pressure that builds up around objects. So you can define how far away from the surface of the colliding object, you want to have a uh, reaction. And as you can see here, it's so beautiful. You can see that the torus actually interacts with the volume around of itself. So it can push the smoke around and away. And that's why the flame behaves like it does right now. 
And to show you that this is not pre-recorded or anything, we just move the object a little bit to the side and you will see we get a completely different behavior now. All the worlds and, and the pressure build up and all this, what defines uh, these worlds, is now completely different and we get a different result. And now if you like this kind of motion and flow, it's about time to render these kind of effects. And Thinking Particles Subscription Drop 2 comes with its own shader. And we have implemented the shader in a very unique way. It stays in the particle system itself. It is a render node, a fully procedural render node in Thinking Particles. So you access it and you can control it like any other render node in Thinking Particles. Okay, let's start the rendering now. In this video, we will use our final render, renderer because it's the fastest render you can get, the fastest GI renderer, the fastest ray tracer you can get right now for 3D Studio Max. And it's highly optimized, especially for atmospheric effects. Even when you don't use our own atmospheric effects, it will be fast, lightning fast with effects like um, you can get from third party developers. As you saw in here, we have a nice interaction and some surprising effect as well. Our flame can create light and it's actually a real area light source based on a gas simulation. That's also a new thing. Right from within 3D Studio Max, from within the particle system, the gas or the flame is emitting the light. And it's emitting a real area light. You can see that on the, with the soft shadows right under the teapot. And all this light emitting is also based on the flame effect itself. A dark smoke, for example, doesn't emit light. A bright a white flame emits more light. And all these effects can be controlled in a really easy way. Here we just increase the intensity of our effect and you can see it brightens up the whole scene really nicely. And because it's behaving like a real light source, we can have controls like, for example, the far attenuation. So to create a much more dramatic effect, I'll just turn on the far attenuation that will keep a tight area where the light can reach. And as you can see, now we have a much more dramatic effect. It's just like any other light source in 3D Studio Max. Because this light source is a real area shadow, you can control the quality of the soft shadows by adjusting the number of rays. And like with any other light source, you will see the effect in the rendering of your soft shadows. I hope you enjoyed this video and please check out our other Subscription Drop 2 videos explaining new features. Thank you for watching this video.